Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification Tutorials and here we are working on chapter 1 and shall be looking on the next topic that is 1.2 the test automation and software development lifecycle and how exactly this can be applied to the different test DLC models. As a part of this particular tutorial, we shall be understanding that the scope of automation may vary depending on the software development life cycles. And certainly it may not be so necessary that the amount and execution is all equivalent in different SDLC models. Also the point of initiation and implementation matters a lot because not all the SDLC model have the same point to kick off working on the test automation. And that's where we would like to talk about it. To start with, the very first thing we are talking about is how test automation is applied across different software development lifecycle models. To pick up the first, we have waterfall model. And of course, the waterfall model is uh, certainly a linear and sequential development type of model and may have different distinct phases like requirement, design, implementation, verification, and maintenance, where each phase typically concludes with documentation that must be approved. Also, implementation of the test automation typically happens in parallel to or after the implementation phase. The reason here is that we may not have enough budget to get started early. And in fact, most of the things are not so well known to us when we talk about these sequential models. We might be involved in doing some quick reviews uh, to participate and find anomalies earlier. But when it comes to implementing automations, I certainly need the object identification and the attributes of that. And that may not be possible until unless we have the implementation happening. That means in parallel to that or only after implementation is done. So it is a very crucial part of automation that we should understand that automation requires you to have the object and object properties, which are the features on the application uh, to be understood and recognized by them. And for that, you need to have the mandatory properties defined by the developer in order to write an automation script to be executed on that. Also to add, of course, uh, the test runs usually take place during the verification phase. Here, the verification phase is being referred to as the testing part. Uh, I'm yet to figure out why exactly the misuse of word is happening. We have learned from long back that verification is the review part, which is static testing and validation is the part which we execute the test cases on. So they are referring testing as verification, which I'm yet to figure out that if that is a mistake or we have defined it somewhere else that how verification became validation and validation became verification. Anyhow, just to concentrate, yes, verification, we are referring to the testing phases due to the software component not being ready for testing until then. So of course, the executions will happen only during the dynamic executions and there will be executed with automation scripts. Similarly, when it comes to the V model, V model is pretty much sequential like waterfall and then includes uh, activities uh, pretty much to that of the waterfall but have different definitions to it like it may have so business requirement gathering and then we have high level design going down to low level design and there are separate different activities corresponding to the test and integration activities which are defined to validate those requirements now this is where the traditional test levels are derived from component component integration system system integration and acceptance Providing a test automation framework for each test level is possible and recommended. So quick comparison between waterfall and V model. In waterfall, we just say that testing is a phase as per the protocols and as per the definition of it. But when it comes to V model, each level is well identified that I have unit testing, integration, system and acceptance. And each of these level would basically represent a different framework. For example, unit, I would need a unit test framework. For integrations, I may involve myself into API testings and the same way system testing will be end-to-end -end testing and acceptance may have a different framework altogether. So that is where the use of automation happens level to level and specific frameworks might be utilized. So TAF, the word T-A-F represents the test automation framework here and that certainly includes the entire amenities to be included. However, we'll be talking down the line what exactly TAF is meant up of and we will be discussing the different components of it. So let's move on to the next. And of course, the next we have is the Agile software development. And Agile software development clearly talks about working in iterations 
which is certainly different from Waterfall and Wii model. And here the team works on uh, innovations and implementing things very fast. So of course, Agile software development method, uh, the TAE, where TAE represents test automation engineers and business representatives can decide on the roadmap, timeline, and planned test delivery. So it's completely dependent between the business representative, which is the customer, and the test automation engineers that what is the scope of automation. However, we all understand that in Agile, we try to achieve maximum automation possible. In fact, we look forward to have DevOps where we have 100% automation implemented, so manual activities can be reduced. But understanding the scope of work and the schedule and the cost involved in it would further give a clear definition to it. So it's not really necessary that blindly we can automate every single thing. So we'll understand the amount of automation to be given and delivered to the business back. Also to add, in this method, there are best practices such as code review, programming, pair programming, and frequent automated test executions, eliminating silos, that is making sure that developers, testers, and other stakeholders work together, allow teams to cover all the tests with the appropriate amount uh, and depth of test automation, achieving a goal called in the sprint automation. So certainly here we work very closely to each other. So that would be very important to understand that we can help each other very easily compared to that of Waterfall and V model as we were working very independently there. So it was hard to align ourselves to that of the you know product, their features, properties, etc. But here, as we are working very closely, we may gather a lot of information from the development team and it will make our job easier to in fact plan and execute our test cases early in the life cycle. Parallelly, we also want to remind you that it might be easier uh, to say that, but it is practically might be complicated and time consuming as well. The reason is every single sprint, we do the automation, right? Whatever is being executed should be automated or might have to uh, automate the progress and testing as well which is the regular activities, what we do other than regression. So it might be complicated at points and might be also following a model of N plus one. That means what you have completed in sprint one can be automated right from the sprint two. So totally dependent on the team, how exactly they want to manage their automation, but there are multiple possibilities what the team should be careful about automating things in agile methodology. The next topic we are adding here is of course to discuss on so how to select suitable test automation tools for a given system under test. So some of the common practices here we want to talk about is like not all the tools are compatible to do testing on every single platform. So we need to understand things like languages, architecture, platform, and many other factors like what protocols it is built on in order to find the most appropriate automation tool. It would be vague to say that an automation tool which you find in the market is capable of performing tests on anything and can perform any type of test. We should understand that automation tools are language and platform specific sometimes and may need different understandings like languages, etc. to do that. And same way when it comes to different levels of testing, I may have different solutions provided. So it's not that unit testing can do performance testing or performance testing tool can do regression testing. So we need to really evaluate the tool prior to execution and understand the capabilities, advantages, and disadvantages of that. Let's continue further to understand more about it. So the factors what we can talk about is to identify the most suitable test tool for a given project. The SUT must be first analyzed. The test automation engineers need to identify the project requirements that can be used as a baseline for the tool selection. Since different test automation tools features are used for UI software and for example, web services, it is important to understand what the project wants to achieve over a period of time. So having, I know just in the previous uh, topic, we understood that having being defined with a goal and objective would give us better alignment to that of selecting a tool. If we don't have a well-defined reasonable goal and objective that what exactly do you want to achieve by having automation being rolled out, it might be you know, just like a fool with a tool, okay? So it will remain always a fool. So that's what the slogan, what we say, but it makes a lot of sense that having a reasonable objective identified would make us, uh, will give us a particular expected result to verify the tool against, right? And as far as the tool meets our goals and expectations, we would find that as a perfect suitable tool. 
But if this tool is not capable of doing that, I would certainly prefer to have some other solutions to be tested before I blindly roll out a tool. So yes, having your project requirements, expectations from this tool, the benefits you want to achieve and goals will all be considered into account. Also to add here that there may be, there is no limit to the number of test automation tools and features that can be used or selected, but the cost must also be considered. Using a commercial off the self tool for implementing a custom solution based on open source technology can be complex process. So we must understand the difference between the open source tool and commercial tool at the same time, understand what kind of benefits and reduction in the manual effort we will have by using commercialized tool and what kind of extra efforts we have to put if in case we opt to go with open source tools. So it's not that simple that what exactly we see could be the only resultant. It might be possible that as you decide to select a tool, you may have multiple things to take care of. Sorry about that. So the next thing, of course, is to evaluate. Uh, the next topic to be evaluated is the composition and experience of the team in the test automation. In the case where the testers have little to no programming experience, using a low code or no code solution may be a viable choice. For technical testers with programming language, it can be helpful to select tools with language matches that of the SUT. In simple words, your team strengths, skill set are pretty important to do the selection of suitable tool as well. If you think your team is very much technical competence or competitive, then you can certainly look forward to the tool which can talk about meeting your goals and SUT. But if you think your team is not so familiar when it comes to the programming skills of writing automation scripts, then we would prefer to have more commercial tools which are low code or no code kind of concept and certainly results into easy preparation like sometime record and playback or sometime generating with auto complete features would be the better options. However, in this also we will consider the requirement, but maybe our cost would go a little high. I may have to organize some training for the tool as well for sure and invest some additional time to let the team get used to automation before they start working on it. So I may not expect a return on investment right from the day one is the concept. We may have to give some time for them to breathe and at the same time, let them uh, have all the support and mentorship as possible so that they can become a good automation tester. However, gradually over a period of time, the team will gain skills and can be switched to another tool. But again, migrating could be another nightmare. So we need to take everything into account right at one point to see at this point for next few years, I do not need an alternative or solution. Also to add, of course, the this particular uh, discussion provides advantages, including the ability to work with developers on debugging test automation defects more efficiently and cross training of members between the team. See, the benefit of this second part, that is the programming skills uh, when the testing team has, they can easily discuss this with the development team and also understand what could be done for the debugging of these things. For example, as an automation test engineer, when I get stuck with my automation script and say, for example, I'm using Java to program my automation test scripts, then I can take help of my developers who also know Java to help me assist debug my scripts or also to understand what can be done better. So it's not that uh, the team who has the programming skills will only have the benefit of writing the automation scripts faster, but it would also be further assisting in terms of making the entire journey more smooth and comfortable. So it is supposed to be considered in all ways to see that what is the best suitable tool for us. So if you're working in agile methodology, you may prefer a programming based tool, which could be uh, an easy way to tackle with help of the developers and they can work together. So it would be of great help to each other to make this happen. Like again, the developers can provide me the information on the development features like properties and attributes to make my automation scripts work. And at the same time, they can further assist us in making our automation scripts more uh, efficient and less code, like with minimum lines, you can do maximum is all that what the benefits you will have. So we should consider every single factor, be it about investment, the cost, the cost may have again, one time investment, recurring investments, or the team strength and skills and the collaboration among the team. All these should be taken into account before you select a most suitable tool for this purpose. So with that, we completely uh, we come to the end of the 1.2 and including the chapter one. We shall be looking at some sample questions in our next tutorial from here. 
and then stepping into the chapter two. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.